apron, sunglasses, bun, the whole shebang. I wanted to jump in and kind of explain to you what is about to be happening on my channel. I mean, there is a ton of content pumping out left and right always, but within different DIYs, when I say they are sponsored by Home Depot's Prospective Program, you are going to be seeing me kind of honing in and going in depth on one specific tool. Now, that's not gonna be every tutorial, but I did wanna just give you a little bit of a warning that if you want to learn new tools with me, because I'm gonna be quite frank, some of the tools they're sending me I'm like how in the world what what project how and why and so you're gonna be kind of going through that process with me I always tell you guys that I am the most professional and professional and this program throughout the rest of the year is really going to test that it's been about two yeah wow holy moly yeah it's been about two months since I've actually been able to be in my shop full-time I've been between three different locations with three huge projects which by the time this video came out you've already seen them so I'll link them down below for you but I wanted to kick this program off with a refresh to kind of settle into my workshop again make sure it's spick and span and clean but also make way for all the new tools home people is going to be sending that I will be sharing with you okay I'm like really excited to jump into my workshop um, again before we jump into this workshop and holy moly Rachel can we talk with our hands more obviously everybody's workshop is going to be different this is what works for me I like to keep things aesthetically pleasing also functional you can come at me for all of the things you can comment down below how much my workshop just doesn't make sense but it makes sense for me and there's only one of me and no one else is using it besides me so it is what it is guys I want to give you the lay of the land so when you first walk out of our house into our garage there's a skate shop that I basically built for Paul so he stopped like banging up my table with his skateboards and leaving all his trash and then there's some wood storage on the opposite side I do have a full pegboard wall that came with the house I did not install it my first set for more of like those copper tones and then my power tool set to the far right this wall actually moves to cover the door so it can get out of the shot, but then you can also move it to access these hand tools and other things that I've collected. And I don't know if you guys have watched my OG, how my garage got to this point makeover, but these workshop cabinets were the star of the show. They are unfortunately not available at Home Depot anymore. First things first, I wasn't utilizing this pegboard to the fullest. I definitely had a lot more space. I just never had the patience to sit and reorganize. I wanted to move the brooms and things off of the pegboard because they took up way too much space and I move them to the right hand side where this little sliver of wall is. This is the same wall organizer that I used in my cleaning closet makeover and I've linked everything that I possibly could that I purchased down below for you guys. The goal was to make as much space on the pegboard as possible so I don't feel overwhelmed when these tools do start to come in. I want everything to have a place but I also want to be able to grow into it. <laughs> Off camera, I spent the next couple of days honestly assessing what I could donate, what I wanted to keep, and how I wanted to go about executing this pegboard wall. So this is where we're at. More of the hand tools and screws that I needed easy access to and clamps were gonna be in the middle. To the far left, I wanted that pegboard space to stay empty to add new tools to. And then I dove into the actual cabinets that had all my no-so and crafting DIY stuff and I really went through it and I threw away what I could and donated what I could but I wanted to again clear those bins up and those shelves up on the off chance that I am receiving that many tools I just want to be able to just feel free and not feel like I need to reassess my entire workshop every single time I'm adding something into it I made an entire tutorial on how I built out this wood storage there is a ton of things that I need to fix which will be a later video hopefully within the next month because once I started cleaning it out I noticed everything was very unlevel but now I have a new tool from this program that's gonna help me with it anyways I didn't throw away the scrap wood don't freak out I actually have gardeners that would work on the side and they said any type of wood I want to throw away just bundle it up for them and they'll take it and they did so that was cool even though there are things to fix when I pull out that larger wood storage on the bottom I can fit an 8x4 piece of plywood there so if you're looking into wood storage this is a great DIY. I'll link this tutorial for you as well, but I love having a jumbo wall calendar in our garage because not only is it a screenshot of my month, just an overview right there every day, but also for the family, you can add stuff and they can look up and they know what dates are there and you can color coordinate accordingly. I love that kind of stuff. I have everything so easily accessible, minus my sandpaper, which always drove me nuts because it's something I obviously use all the time. I just grabbed some scrap wood, wood glue, and my pin nailer, and I actually just cut down wood to size and created a little cubby moment, used my label maker to label the grits accordingly, attach that to underneath where my sanders are so I can just grab and go. 
this was kind of a no-brainer to me after I built it. I can't believe I didn't do it sooner. But what I love in particular is that I have a shelf that fits all my sanders. So what is attached to is where the sanders are and it's just kind of like a bada bing, bada boom. Something I did not know is that I had picture hangers on hand that could be a way for me to hang up my measuring tapes versus a nail and it getting stuck and me pulling the nail out every time. I decided to upgrade this extension cord to a three-prong multi-outlet one that actually hangs swivels and can retract back up into itself so I don't have to ravel it every time on my arm and it's a not as big of an eyesore either. Falling in love is wonderful. Callie is always my emotional support, but during this process, if you are a real one, you recognize that mirror to the right. I was doing this small bathroom makeover while redoing my workshop and my parents' courtyard, so it was a lengthy process for a lot of this. I spent a little time and showed some love to Paul's skate corner, and after I was done moving everything around and organizing, I finally get to test out the first tool that I received from Home Depot for the Prospective program. We are kicking it off with the rigid 16 gallon 6.5 peak HP wet dry shop vacuum with a fine dust filter and accessories plus a cart to roll around on. Right off the bat, I'm super pumped because the only shop vacs that I have had are the smallest that I could afford, which are the bucket ones from Home Depot. So this is a huge upgrade for me. It includes two and a half inch by seven foot tug along dual flex locking hoses. That sounds crazy, but it's just basically the hose that you're pulling along to suck everything up. Two extension wands, a utility nozzle, a wet nozzle, car nozzle, crevice tool, crevasse tool, muffler and diffuser and a fine dust filter. But what I personally love most is how this is so organized onto the actual vac. It utilizes the space on the wheels and in the back for the car and on the side for the hose. And then you have this handle that you get to like pull the vacuum around with and not have to worry because you have these oversized rear wheels and cart handle for rough job site terrain. Falling in love. It has a 20 foot power cord that provides the most reach and stores easily on the top where that little handle is for the cord wrap, which you'll see later. This wet bag has max power capacity and accessories and 12 feature upgrades from the previous 16 gallon model. The extender and this nozzle in particular are my personal favorites because I don't have to like bend over, get on my hands and knees and really like get in the nooks and cranny. It is so powerful that this thing picks up so much that I don't really have to go back and like double take in all the corners. Other shop backs as well, I have a issue with static and I know that sounds really weird, but like I'll be trying to vacuum up all this sawdust and then it'll start to get attached to the outside of the nozzle that I'm using, but I didn't have that issue with this one. And I know that seems kind of weird and small, but the minute I would turn off my old shop backs, all that sawdust that was on the outside of that nozzle would just fall to the floor and I have to like sweep it versus vacuum it. I know that sounds crazy and small, but it really wasn't convenient when you had to like do a double take after you vacuumed and then have to clean the vacuum itself because the sawdust just stuck to it. <laughs> This thing trucked right along behind me, going over all the bumps and all the things. I'm just kidding. There are really not that many bumps in my workshop, but I do have to say that it completely inspired me to get my shop as dust free as humanly possible. <laughs> so I was vacuuming my workshop, obviously off camera in the most crazy ways uh, for the longest time that my neighbor came over and was like, can you come clean my workshop with that? I knew I wasn't vacuuming up 16 gallons worth of stuff, but I did want to see how easy I could dump this vacuum out on my own. And it actually was a lot easier than I thought. I just was a kind of a mess and the parts fell everywhere because it fell out of my hand and that has nothing to do with the vacuum itself. That has to do with the person operating it not being the, you know, the sharpest tool in the shed. I didn't want to waste a bunch of water, so here's a little small sample in a small bowl, but it sucks up water like there is no tomorrow. I don't necessarily know when I will be picking up a ton of wet debris, but it's nice to know that say our bathtub got clogged and the water smelled terrible for whatever reason, I had to like obviously get rid of it. This is one way. I also just love the fact that everything is on this cart and it's so well organized. They have these little clips on the side for the hose so it stays in place. But in my opinion, just overall the power of this thing, I just know I can tackle any type of cleanup in my shop moving forward. So I'm thinking this is where I will grow into with the program. These are like all the things I use, clamps, 
screwdrivers, the whole shebang, just like typical tools and bits. And then these are hand tools, tapes, cords, and then in the back corner are all the like mops, brooms, the cleaning supplies. So functional. Something else I didn't notice was that my big old trash can fits right underneath my table. And that is pure perfection when I'm working, plus seats for entertaining because Paul smokes cigars out here sometimes as well when the weather doesn't permit. That split color wall, those are both of my sets that I shoot on 24 seven. The pegboard obviously is to hold the things that I don't necessarily want on those sets. And then I have my little brainstorming area with my clipboards, with campaigns, pens, pencils, whatever else I need. But don't let this workshop table fool you. I also have even more odds and ends in the drawers organized. And I didn't realize how dusty this was till I was doing a final reveal shot. It's wonderful. They say, they say. On the right hand side of that mini fridge, I have all my screws, nails, hooks, picture hanging kits, Velcro, I mean, just everything that I could possibly need to put things together. Up top, I have my spray paint, stains, adhesives, and a note that says, I love you from Paul that he put there and I will forever keep there. Where I can't necessarily dedicate an entire cabinet or a drawer, that's when the bins come in handy because I can organize the smaller things within them, but also having an organized chaos. I hope that you guys enjoyed a more in-depth tour and organized clean up with me in my workshop. I'm excited to kick this program off with Home Depot. But now it is time to just make another mess, dive in, get to building, use some new tools. You have a video coming out on Wednesday and you got another one coming out on Friday. I'm going to be pumping them out left and right for you guys. Thank you once again to Home Depot for partnering up with me on this series. You guys, please comment down below any tools you're interested in using so I can work it into this series as well. I'll see you Wednesday for another DIY.